thank you everyone for joining us for our daily Design Innovation Month webcast. My name is Chris Dubuque. I'm one of the application engineers with Computer Aided Technology. I am located far out west, typically in Portland, Oregon, and I'm going to be helping out today's presenter who is Nate Marsh. He's one of our senior support application engineers with Computer Aided Technology, and he's put together a, a very good presentation, as you can see, on design tables. Uh, before we get into the content that everybody's waiting for, I'll go over just a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, number one, all of our webcasts are recorded. So we are actively recording this webcast, and we will upload uh, the webcast to the CATI YouTube channel. It does take us a few days to get the link from WebEx and to process the audio, so we appreciate your patience there. But again, that that will go out shortly. Uh, because we're recording the audio, I do have everybody's microphones muted. So I ask that you please keep yourselves muted because any background noise does get picked up by the recording system and will be forever uh, uploaded in the video to YouTube. Uh, if you have any type of WebEx questions or technical issues or anything like that, uh, you can chat to me. I'm listed as C-A-T-I in the chat. We'll also send out a link again to that CATI YouTube channel so you can just reply to that. And I think with all of that, I will hand the presentation over to uh, Nate. So take it away, Nate. Alrighty, yeah. As Chris said, I'm Nate Marsh um, on the technical support team here out of the Columbus, Ohio office. Um, and hello, everyone, and thanks for joining this session on how to build and maintain effective design tables. So brief overview of uh, what I'll try to cover over these next 25 or so minutes. Some design table basics, setting up, working with, and configuring design tables, and a quick look into uh, the configuration publisher. Kind of a hidden tool inside of SolidWorks. Alrighty, so if you aren't familiar, what are configurations? Configurations are just different versions of a part within a single file. Um, configurations can configure most commonly dimensions, so maybe you have a pipe here, like in the uh, bottom of the screen uh, that has different length dimensions, or maybe you have some version of a file that has maybe a hole or no hole. So dimensions can be configured, uh, features can be suppressed or unsuppressed, configured in that way, and also custom properties. Maybe you have some of the versions of your model that are a certain material and other versions of uh, the same kind of geometry that's a different material. So you can configure those as well. I don't know why there is a red line here. Anyways, how do you get to those configurations? How do you see those configurations? So here in my model, I've got uh, an extruded boss and a hole. And if you go to the Configuration Manager tab at the top, you can kind of double click and toggle through the different configurations that might exist or might not yet exist. All parts and all assemblies have to have at least one configuration. Um, so you can double click it and activate that configuration. You can add configurations this way. You can modify configurations this way. Okay. So why use design tables? Design tables are nothing more than Excel taking advantage of configurations inside of SolidWorks. One example that maybe is uh, familiar is hardware, such as a hex bolt with different sizes or varying diameters or lengths. In the case of a hex bolt, not much is changing from a geometry point of view, but maybe just a length growing by a quarter of an inch or a diameter changing size. Another, uh, another example is an airfoil. Here we have a model with an extrude that's using Sketch 2, and the extrude depth is 200. In a different file, we're using the same airfoil with the same sketch, but it's a different extrude length, 175. Again, a different same sketch, same extrude, but a different length diameter. Instead of having four separate files that we would have to manage, we could create four different versions of that same model inside of one single file with configurations and just configure that one dimension, 200, 175, 150, 125, depending on the configuration. Why are design tables preferred over other methods of working with configurations? Well, because design tables use the power of Excel, like I mentioned before, to configure these models. So in Excel, you can easily copy and paste cells, use formulas, concatenations, and add and modify configurations quickly and easily. Um, 
when you're creating this design table and once you have it created inside of Excel, you'll see in this red box here in the screenshot a listing of all the different configurations that exist. If you want to add another configuration, you'll put your cursor in the next available kind of box. In this case, it would be A7 and type whatever you would want that new configuration name to be. And again, A8 and A9, you can create as many configurations as you would want. Same with the parameters that maybe are being configured. Right now, there's in the purple box across the two row, we've got a few different parameters being configured. If we wanted to add another parameter, maybe another dimension that's going to be changing in those configurations, we could select in that E2 box and add that parameter that we want configured. Syntax is critical, so make sure in this case there's a length, that's a dimension, and a pipe, that's a feature name, so make sure you're using um, exact syntax. How do you insert a design table? Well, from the file menu at the top, go to Insert, Tables, Design Table. Once you insert that design table, you can choose three different options. Over on the left here, you can see do we want to create a blank design table, do we want to auto-create a design table, or do we want to create one from an existing file? Um, assuming that you don't already have a, an Excel file created, a design table Excel file created, we either have to go with the blank option or the auto-create option. The blank option basically inserts just that, a blank Excel table, where then we can select on parameters that exist, configurations that might exist, and populate those specifically that we've selected into our design table. Or maybe we've kind of already are started with our different configurations, and maybe we have a hole that's suppressed and unsuppressed, or we have a dimension that's going from 3 inches to 6 inches in some configurations. The auto-create option will automatically generate those pre-configured parameters into our design table. So here, in this example, we've got four different configurations. We can insert the design table by going to Insert, Tables, Design Table. Brings up our option for what, how do we want this design table generated. I'm just going to leave it to Auto Create. And I'll hit the green check here. What it does, something kind of weird, flickers in Excel and it creates this design table. You can see the different four different configurations listed there in A3, 4, 5, and 6. 6 inch with hole, 6, uh, 3 inch with hole, 6 inch no hole, etc. Once you've inserted the design table into your part or your assembly, you can edit it in two different ways. Once you insert the design table, you'll see a new tables folder up here in the configuration manager there on the left hand side. And you can right click on that and say edit table or edit table in new window. What edit table does is it kind of uh, splits SolidWorks and it's you're kind of in half SolidWorks mode and half Excel mode. The ribbon across the top, that's normally the SolidWorks command manager, is replaced by an Excel ribbon where you can use full use of Excel functionality. Um, the other option, Edit Table in New Window, if you right click on that design table and select Edit Table in New Window, it opens up Excel completely in its own separate window where you can make your modifications, you can add your new configurations, add the new parameters that you're configuring across the top, so on and so forth, change your dimensions if need be. So then how do you get back to SolidWorks to propagate those new configurations and new dimensions? Well, if you did the first option, right-click, Edit Table, so you're in half SolidWorks mode and half Excel mode, you can just left-click into the graphics area of SolidWorks. That'll propagate those updates and changes to your design table back to your SolidWorks model. Or if you're in Edit Table in New Window and you've made your changes to your design table, you can simply close out of the Excel document. That'll propagate those changes back to your SolidWorks model. Um, just remember, this Excel file doesn't actually exist on your computer yet. It's internal to your SolidWorks file. So maybe something you would want to do is save that table externally. Another option that's listed there is save table. The only reason I mention that is just in case your file gets corrupted or you delete your file or something happens to it. Well, if something happens to your file, since that Excel file is internal to it, 
you've lost the Excel, the design table. So if you do want to save it out, you can right click save table. Um, the other reason I say that is each part, each assembly, you can only have one design table. This is kind of a way around it. If you did have more than one design table, you could create a design table, save it out, delete it from your part, insert table, design table, create a second design table. Once you have them both configured, design table one, design table two, you can always delete it out, insert design table, browse to your Excel file that you have. If you want to add a new feature to an existing design table to be configured, like an extrude, you can right click, edit table, that'll bring up our design table. So now we're in half SOLIDWORKS mode, half Excel mode, the Excel ribbon across the top. We can, uh, if we wanted to, we can double click on a feature in the feature tree. That'll bring up all the dimensions relative to that feature. We can put our cursor in the design table across the next subsequent parameter, double click on that dimension maybe we want to add to our design table and configure accordingly. Maybe we want the two three inch to be 1.25 pipe diameter and the two six inch to be one inch pipe diameter. And if I expand on this, you can see left click out into the graphics area, that should update. Maybe we need to do a rebuild. And if I kind of toggle through, the three inch are a little bit larger pipe diameter than the six inch because we've just added that to the design table. When you're first inserting a design table or if you right click edit feature on that design table, there are a few options listed. Under edit control, we have, I'm just going to highlight it right here, edit control. We have allow model edits to update the design table or block model edits that would update the design table. What this does is while you're working inside of SOLIDWORKS, if you maybe want to change a dimension that's already linked inside of the design table, do you want your users to be able to double click, modify that dimension while working inside of SOLIDWORKS, or do you want that behavior blocked so that you can only modify that dimension in the design table itself? Here I'll show kind of the two different versions. So we've got this design table that we just added that new pipe diameter at sketch 1, 1.25, 1, 1.25. 1, 1 we edit feature. Right now it's set to allow model edits to update. So now if I try to double click and change that dimension, so changing this property will update the corresponding cell in the design table next time it is edited in SOLIDWORKS. So since we have it set to allow, it's going to let us change this dimension as we would normally expect. Double click, we can change it to something else and proceed working. The other side of that coin is right click edit feature. If we have it set to block model edits, and then again we try to double click, now we get an error that says you attempted to change a field that is currently locked. So that's what that option does. It prevents us from changing this dimension, for instance. Uh, that's actually configured or being driven by that design table. Moving right along, general principles apply when working in design tables. Dimension appropriately. Um, try to avoid creating children to features that are going to be suppressed. Um, how complex is your model? Are you just getting started? Are there a ton of features yet to come? Um, is it complete? Are there going to be equations? Another thing important kind of going back to what I just said is keep things orderly. It's always a good idea to name your sketches and name your features. If not, you'll be trying to stuck trying to figure out what D1 is or what sketch 1 is instead of if you would have just renamed it your dimension to be pipe diameter or your sketch to be rod sketch. That makes a little more sense. How do you rename stuff if you're not familiar? In your feature tree inside of SOLIDWORKS, by default, you probably see sketch one, sketch two, box extrude one, box extrude two. If you do a slow left click, you can rename, or you can also just left click and hit F2. That'll allow you to rename it and maybe call it something that makes a little more sense, like whole sketch or rod sketch. Okay, and how do you bring up dimensions? I prefer when I'm working in design tables to kind of have the dimensions on my screen 
So I can literally, while I'm in the design table, left click, add them to my table, and kind of configure it that way. You can right click on that annotations folder in your feature tree and say show feature dimensions to display all the dimensions. And you can also right click on features maybe you don't want those dimensions shown and said hide the dimensions. What do I mean by all that? Well here, pull this up. I'll say right click, show feature dimensions. That brings up all the dimensions. Maybe I don't want the pipe dimensions, the dimensions that went into creating the pipe shown, so I can right click and say hide all dimensions. That'll hide the pipe dimensions, so I'm just left with the whole dimensions, because that's the dimension I want to add to my design table. Right click, edit my design table, put my cursor in the next available parameter cell, right there, H2. I can left click to pop in that whole diameter at whole sketch and then configure those accordingly. Maybe I want the two three configurations, the fourth row and the sixth row to be 0.4, and the two six configurations to stay at 0.5. Hit the rebuild, and now I've just added that parameter, that dimension to my design table. Other tips, um, start simple, test. Don't uh, spend an hour and realize, oh, I don't know what it, why it's not working. So start simple. Test it out as you're working along the way. You can also add user notes. If you put a money sign, user underscore notes, you can add text. Maybe if you're sending this file to someone that maybe isn't familiar with why you're creating this design table, you can add some notes. Don't add too much. Also, like I mentioned before, you can always save out a copy of your design table. Right click, save table. Save it on your desktop or somewhere just as a backup, just in case something goes wrong and you need to revert back. Um, also, don't skip any rows or columns. Once you skip a row, like here in this C, there's nothing there, that's when SolidWorks stops. So all of this D stuff is ignored. So for parameters that are being configured, this D column is not going to do anything. Same with configurations. If we skip this seven row and I added a new configuration in row eight, it's going to be ignored because We've skipped a row. Bringing it all back together, going through a few steps we just covered is this pipe example. In this example, we've got 106 different sizes and scheduled schedules, four different materials for each size schedule, which leads us to 424 size schedule material configurations. Each size schedule and material um, come in eighth inch increments from one inch to 20 feet which leads us to a t grand total of over 800,000 total configurations. In this little example, we're just going to look at the yellow highlighted box. Schedule 40, quarter inch pipe size. And first, you can see this design table that's already been created, varying from size one inch to three inches in eighth inch increments. You can see all the parameters across the top, material, nominal diameter. If I open up this pipe part, go to the configuration manager at the top. I've got my one default configuration. I can go to insert tables, design table. From file, if I've already got it created, I can browse to that Excel design table file. Say OK. Once you do that, since I've already got all those configurations in there, and I accept or I left click out into the graphics area, it'll say the design table generated those configurations. Now I can toggle through and see what that design table generated in my model. So from that design table, I was able to create all those different versions of this file, of this pipe. Moving right along, in that manually designed, created design table, the use used to generate those different configurations, well, we can use Excel formulas, um, we can use drop downs within Excel, we can use concatenations. So if I kind of just look a little closely at this Excel file, for instance, this length, I start out with just one inch, and then I say add an eighth of an inch to that previous cell, and again and again. So I'm kind of using Excel functionality and equations. 
um, maybe going over to the schedule column. I have this drop down so I can select on whatever schedule I would want. When I do that, you might have noticed it also updates this configuration name, the name of my configuration. That's concatenated, it's kind of depending on. So first it's calling out pipe and then the schedule and the material, then the nominal diameter by the length of this thing. So we can concatenate our configuration names so that when we pop this in to an assembly and get a bill, bill of materials, it'll spit out whatever size pipe, whatever thing we're working with. Um, lastly, taking it to the next level, um, a hidden tool that not many people know about is this configuration publisher. What this does is it creates a property manager to allow easy configuration selection when inserting a part into an assembly. What does all that mean? Well, I'm sure many of you have inserted toolbox components into an assembly, and when you do that, you get to select on what size toolbox component, what length, is there a thread, whatever. It's kind of similar to that using the design table. So there's two different ways to do this configuration publisher. There's a single line table and a multiple line table. First, we'll look at this single line table. Um, this table includes all the parameters that might change, and it only includes one configuration line row. So you can see I have money sign part number. That's used to control the name of the new configurations, which then in this case is concatenated based on the schedule and the material and the nominal diameter. And then once you have that inserted, then you can get to this configuration publisher. So to get to this configuration publisher, you first need to have a model, then you need to have a design table inserted. Either it can be a single line or a multiple line table, which we'll get to in just a minute. Then, once you have a design table in your model, you can right click and select Configuration Publisher. So we have this single line design table for our model. I open up this part. I don't have it, the design table inserted yet, so I need to go to Insert, Tables, Design Table, browse to that single line file, so from file, browse to that single line file, say Open, that'll link and hit the green check here. That'll link my part to this single line design table. And let's click out into the graphics area. That'll take us back to our model, link it up. So now we have a design table, at which point we are able to go back to the configuration manager, right click, and there's a configuration publisher. Once you click on that, this new window appears. Here in just a second, there we go, the configuration publisher. At this point, I'll show you what we can do with that next. We can drag and drop lists numbers, and then link those to the parameters defined in that design table. So maybe we uh, know a di nominal diameter. We want it to add a nominal diameter, and we know we want options of quarter inch, three-eighths inch, half inch, three-quarter inch. So how we can do that is we can drag and drop that list while we're in that configuration publisher. Maybe we'll name this one nominal diameter. We want it linked to that nominal diameter dimension inside that filter sketch. And maybe we want the values to be quarter inch, three eighths. So we can kind of fill it out here. Maybe we want to add another list. Maybe we want this list linked to the outer diameter dimension. And we can also kind of relate it to say maybe I want the parent to be the nominal diameter. So if I select on quarter inch for my nominal diameter drop down, I'm going to set the outer diameter to automatically be 0.54, or for 3 8 selection, 0.675, etc. Once you fill that out a little more, it might look something like this with the schedule and a wall thickness. And once finished, it would look something like this. I'll show you inside of SolidWorks here. we open up this pipe. Now we've got that design table inserted and we also have this property manager which is that configuration publisher. We can right click edit feature 
takes a second to kind of generate from your design table. And then this edit is how we can make our changes. And then the SW preview is what it would look like inside of SolidWorks with our drop downs and everything. And maybe save it. Now maybe we create an assembly so we can pop it in. Once we insert that component, kind of like our toolbox, we get drop downs, which we can select on the nominal diameter, schedule, and then also specify a length. Maybe we want it to be 3.25 inches in length. Once we hit the green check, it'll automatically generate that size from those selections. And we can kind of cross check and if I double click on it, we can see we have a size of 3.25, so it automatically created that size from our input from our configuration publisher. One step further, and the last on the agenda, is a multiple configuration design table model. Um, so in this case, we already have a complete design table. Um, this di design table has to include a row for all of your configurations and a column for each of the variables that might be configured. So really quickly here. If we open up this guy, we've already inserted a design table. And that design table has, I don't know, 25 or 30 configurations already created with different parameters being varied. So I'm going to try to move this guy over. You can see all the configurations that we've already placed here. There we go. A bunch of fours and fives and sixes for the length. If I kind of I can toggle through. So in this case, similar but a little different. We have a length, we have a width, we have a depth, the whole. Those are all kind of pointed back to a column inside of our design table. So we've got different sizes already kind of configured. So now if I were to save this thing, flip back or make an assembly from a part or create a brand new assembly. Insert that component. Just like before, when I hit the green check, I can specify the length, the width, the depth. Is there a hole? Is there no hole? And then there it is. We select on the 6, we select on 1.5, so that's what kind of it out in our assembly. And that is a multiple line configuration publisher. And that is all I have. Thanks for attending. Hopefully you guys learned a few things about design tables.